choosing us this afternoon. We are starting from Parliament, where a bipartisan probe gets underway into the banking crisis, despite concerns by some members of the investigative committee that information for the probe is not enough to help do justice to the problem. Boga Central MP Isaac Adongo, who is the minority member of the committee, stormed out of the in-camera sitting this morning, complaining information provided for the work is too scanty. Executive summary, KPM. You can't give me executive summary of Boulder's report, and the rest are your press conferences. Wow. I can't be part of this. Wow. I can't be part of this. And not the, K, the full KPMG report is not even part. This is what I have. This is the documents we are considering. When it's already in the public domain. Why should I sit in that meeting and rubber stamp it? I won't do it. Listen, this is a rubber stamp process. It will deliver no value. I am not willing to be part of it. These are the documents they gave to us. Statement of banking sector, press release by Bank of Ghana, press release, press with governance speech. When it comes to KPMG, they only give you conditions and opinions of Unibank. There were five asset quality reviews at Unibank. There were four of them in one month. We don't even have that report. They claim that there was a preliminary work that was done on K by KPMG to take a decision to go into it. We don't have that report. We don't even know the terms of reference of the job that KPMG did. We don't even know what contract we signed with Boulders. We don't even know the full report of Boulders except executive summary of Boulders' work. Why will I sit in that meeting? I won't sit in that meeting. So what explanation is coming from the They are just trying to cover up. That's all they are trying to do. Because these are the documents. I have them here. They don't make sense to me. I can't see how the state will spend $8 billion. Close to 6,000 jobs are being lost. A parliamentary inquiry, and this is what they bring to me, and I want to be part of that meeting and give credence to that kind of a meeting. I don't take part in rubber stamp meetings. Yeah, but your other colleagues are there. Well, that is what they want to do. I am for my constituents, and I feel that my constituents deserve better than this. I am not going to be part of it. The lack of these documents you talk about, what because will Because well, those documents will give me a clearer understanding of what happened, not what the governor tells me. I must read the documents and ask the appropriate questions for the governor to answer. I don't have them. Why? If I read the Boulder's report, can't I understand it? Why do you want to give me executive summary? But these reports are already in public. So why are they hiding them? We want to know whether what is in the public is indeed their documents, so that we can confirm. We can't rely on what is in the public. We want to have an official document from them. They don't have the documents. What they have here really doesn't speak to the issues. And I can't sit there and be listening to speeches. Did I you, must did, read and understand. Yeah, them. Did you raise these objections before? I raised them before. Government. I raised them What's before. The I, and they said they had had meetings and they had agreed that these are the level of documentation they need. And I said, well, serving my constituents, I don't think that I can rely on these to take any decisions, and that I can't even proceed to ask questions because the questions might emanate from these documents. Very basic. Everybody should know that if you are proving the collapse of a bank and you have done asset quality review, in some instances you went there four times in one month. There must be a reason. Where is the document? We don't have it. And you are the one now telling me what was in that document. How? You have contracted somebody to do a job. We can't even see the contract document. We can't even see the terms of reference of that job in order to tell whether they did a good job or not. I don't even have the full report. What I have is executive summary. And you pick bits and pieces and you give it to me. And I'm supposed to be asking you questions based on that. You talk about Boulder's report. You are referring to it in your preliminary discussions. When I check what I have for Boulder's report is the executive summary. And you think that you took somebody's bank because of executive summary? Clearly, this is not a process I want to be part of. Finally, what about the one next? I don't take part. Let the caucus take a decision at the end. All right. Well, that did not stop the probe uh, in Parliament uh, in the last few minutes. We are told the committee has concluded the probe with the governor of the central bank, um, Dr. Addison. My colleague, Joseph Opokugapo, joins us on the line with more. Good afternoon to you, Opokugapo. Have you been briefed on uh, what exactly transpired between the committee and Dr. Addison? Uh, um, hi, uh, Aisha. Um, and so it was a long track session which lasted for about uh, three and a half hours when committee members interrogated the governor of the central bank, Dr. N.S. Addison. We gathered a number of issues came up. There were questions to him about 
what was being done with regards to job losses as a result of the collapse of the banks and the establishment of the consolidated bank and even the other two banks that went into DCB. Uh, some of the council members say they were not happy with the responses they gave. John Jinapo, who is a member of the committee, for example, said the governor was very evasive when those questions were put to him. He wasn't able to tell clearly as to how much jobs are being lost and the timelines as far as the job losses are concerned. And for some of those members on the committee, uh, they weren't really excited with the responses that he gave. There were other questions to him about the role that officials of the Bank of Ghana, whose responsibility was to supervise work in those banking, uh, you know, in the banking industry, and how um, they, they are, they, 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 the way they did their work contributed to the collapse. Again, John Dinapo, who is a member of the committee, says when they interrogated the governor, he, he claims the governor admitted the complicity of the Bank of Ghana in how come we saw these banks collapsing. But when they demanded that what is being done to punish the Bank of Ghana officials responsible for this, again, the kind of responses that they got, they were not exactly satisfied. Um, again, we gather that in the entire interrogation, uh, the governor sought to explain why government and why the Bank of Ghana decided to establish one bank collapse the, the seven, and uh, the governor responded by saying that they did that mainly to protect the positive money. Uh, the governor himself was unwilling to give any further comment on what transpired in the meeting when uh, we engaged him, um, and except to make the point that for him, the whole conversation went well. So apart from Dr. Addison, were there other people who were interrogated by this committee? The governor was in the company of uh, two other officials from the central bank, and but the governor uh, responded to a lot of the questions. Uh, and then uh, his supporting staff also uh, provided the additional responses. Any moment from now, we are expecting officials from the finance ministry to appear before the committee um, in the next few minutes. And then tomorrow, officials of the Consolidated Bank, officials of KPMG, and officials of Price Waterhouse Coopers, who were the receivers as far as the collapse of their banks are concerned. And then on Friday, officials of the um, Securities and Exchange Commission, as well as the National Insurance Commission, will be appearing. One other thing we, we've learned happened uh, in this probing was the fact that Isaac Adongo walked out. Um, how has or did the leadership of the committee uh, resolve his concerns? Uh, the concerns remain unresolved. The only reaction from some members of the committee, Benjamin Kudo, who is a colleague of his on the um, minority side, that's the NDP, uh, virtually dismissed some of the concerns that Mr. Dongo had. He uh, drew attention to the fact that Mr. Dongo had the right to demand additional documentation, which he, Benjamin Kudu, rightly support. But then, as far as he is concerned, they got all the necessary documents that they would require. He explained that, apart from the hard copy documents that actually got to them, some of the documents got to them in soft copy. And so, um, the chairman of the committee, Dr. Makasbe Eboa, made the necessary documents that were quite available to them. And so um, he doesn't understand how come Benjamin Kudu, uh, you know, um, I, I, Isaac Adongo used that as a basis to actually go out of the meeting. He again responded to Isaac Adongo's uh, claim that this probe will lead to nowhere. Uh, and according to Benjamin Kudu, he thinks the probe is not beginning and to set the conclusion would not exactly be fair, but he thinks this probe is a very useful one. But, uh, Gakpo, let's uh, listen to exactly or some of the things that the governor has been telling uh, the committee. I mean, what are some of the highlights of his explanations to the committee? How did it go for you? Very well. It was a pleasure sharing the information. Yeah. Hello, Poku Gakpo. Yes, so that's actually the brief comment that the governor gave when if, if he you, stepped out of the meeting. If, if, you, if, you, if you can say that again, we didn't quite hear you on that. Okay. We didn't quite hear you on what the governor told the committee. If you can repeat that. All right, we're losing Opoku Gakpo there. I think we can listen to Dr. Addison. All right, whilst we 
play we wait to play that uh, soundbite from Dr. As Asibe. Uh, Dr. Addison, there are calls for the committee's meeting or probing to be made public. Let's listen to uh, Dr. Asibe. As promised earlier, um, we are not taking questions. Okay. As, as you might uh, well be aware, we have invited institutions at this stage. So this morning we met with the Bank of Ghana. Uh, this afternoon at 2.30, the Ministry of Finance is coming in. Tomorrow we'll meet with the receivers. That would be Pricewaterhouse and KPMG. And later on in the afternoon tomorrow, the new Consolidated Bank will also come in. And then on Friday, we have the Securities and Exchange Commission and the National Insurance Commission. We are inquiring. We are gathering information. That's what we are doing. So we are not inviting the banks at this stage. We have to gather information. We cannot rely on information of WhatsApp groups and in the media. We've asked for documentation from the Bank of Ghana. They've supplied. Where we found gaps, we've asked them to supply more. After this three-day exercise, we'll piece all the information together and then decide on the next steps, whom to invite going forward and uh, uh, what we'll do. If that at that stage we want to do a full-blown public inquiry, uh, will do so. But now we are dealing with the institutions. And so I'm sure you, you saw the governor and his deputy and his team go. We've been with them for over three hours. And everybody had the opportunity to ask questions that they wanted to ask uh, without fear or favor. And so, as indicated earlier, the Ministry of Finance will come in this afternoon at 2.30 for us to continue with our engagement. So this is what we've been thus far. Thank you. And that was Dr. Addison explaining, uh, that was Dr. SCB explaining um, what kind of interrogation they're having with the governor. But back on the phone is Joseph Opoku Gakpo to tell us more. So earlier you explained that uh, Mr. Addison's interrogation was very brief. But there, there's been calls from several quarters for the probe to be uh, made open to the public. Is the matter being considered by the committee at all? The committee, Dr. Makatbe, has been explaining uh, that uh, this is just an initial probe they are doing over the next three days. There is a possibility that based on the evidence that they gather and the information that gets to them, and they decide to prove further, probably by bringing in officials of the various banks that collapse eventually, we could see a situation of that uh, public inquiry happening. Um, the majority leader, say, Jemens was also been participating in this meeting of the committee and he's been explaining further in various interviews that what the committee is doing is within the remit when it comes to the standing orders of parliament and that there isn't a strict provision that they are supposed to open up their hearings to members of the public uh, and that he is happy with what the committee is doing so far and if uh, guided by what the committee is able to find over the next three days they decide to open up for a public probe that again would be a good move going forward. But again, the majority leader, Seke Mensapon, has been reacting to Isaac Adongo's decision to boycott this particular sitting. He thinks that um, it was not a good thing and that Mr. Adongo could have found alternative means of resolving the concerns that he had instead of walking away from the committee sitting. But he's expecting that the committee will do a good job with the recommendation that they will come up with eventually. And earlier, we wanted to uh, actually get the concerns that were raised by Dr. Addison. We missed you on that. If you can kindly tell us exactly what were his concerns. Uh, um, Dr. Addison himself only responded to questions when he appeared before the committee. Members of the committee raised concerns about job losses as a result of the collapse of the banks and the consolidation of some which, according to members of the committee, including John Abdullah Jinapo, the governor didn't provide adequate responses to because the governor was unable to give firm uh, answers on how many jobs were be lost and the timelines within which the jobs would be lost. And in the words of John Jinapo, the governor's responses were quite disappointing, he said. He also raised concerns with the kind of responses that the governor gave when it came to uh, the role that officials of the Bank of Ghana played in the collapse of the bank, and how come no one has been 
dealt with at the Bank of Ghana between when the collapse happened and now. And again, he says the government's responses were not very much spot on. But they are all looking up the kind of response that they will get from officials of the finance ministry as well, who are expected to appear before the committee um, in the next few minutes. So briefly, what uh, is the governor saying about this whole collapse? He's been explaining that the reason that they did it was to save the funds of deposited. And that was primarily the motivation for his they did what they did, and that they felt that this move in terms of uh, collapsing the banks and consolidating them into one was the best for the country. Many thanks to you. Pokugako is our parliamentary correspondent. We'll be updating you in our subsequent bulletins with the happenings at the committee. But on the phone line now is Michael Ni Anani Yaboy, who is a financial consultant, and he has at some point done due diligence on one of the collapsed banks. Good afternoon to you, uh, Mr. Yaboy. Good afternoon. So what's your own reading into the concerns expressed by Dr. Addison after he appeared before the committee today? Well, I think it is only natural being put on the spot that, that uh, you've been asked questions that probably you, you had not expected. Uh, I think it's only normal for him. And knowing also that this is uh, part of uh, some of these issues have uh, ended up in court. And... Uh, whatever is provided uh, in, in terms of the parliamentary fact-finding uh, would also be subject uh, of uh, a court uh, uh, trial, which is suspected soon. And therefore, he would not be comfortable giving out certain information as it stands now. But are you satisfied with the answers he gave to the committee? One, that uh, the banks were collapsed to save the uh, funds of depositors. Well, I am not satisfied. Uh, look, we, we will have to uh, stop this thing we do to ourselves as a nation. We have to get uh, more detail as, as people. Uh, how did we get here? How was the fund? Uh, uh, taken over by individuals so without the uh, Bank of Ghana uh, not being in the know. Was it not reported? Were they suppressing? Yes. What really happened? Because I think that is why Parliament is interested. We ought to know what really happened, how we got here. These related part transactions, were they not reported to EOG? Were they not aware? We can't keep on doing this to ourselves. We need to know exactly what happened so that we can put in legislation that will ensure that such things are never repeated. And I think everybody should support these parliamentary fact-finding issues uh, uh, they, they, they are on so that we can get right answers that we need to solve future problems. Well, there have been also calls for this probing to be open to the public. What's your stance on this? I think it will help everybody. Today we are being told of uh, Mr. Dongo working out based on certain issues. If it was open to the public, nobody would be telling us what happened. We would actually know what happened and we would know whether it was justified. If he is saying that, look, you have brought us an executive summary when the actual report is not attached, yes, he has a reason to do that. Well, work out the decision. But again, all these things will be prevented if we are watching it or the public is made to uh, watch it. Uh, this in camera thing, I don't think, will help. It will rather uh, fuel most of these speculations we don't want out. And I am sure that is what the EOG government don't want the speculation. Well, uh, Mr. Yaboy, we're extremely grateful for your time this afternoon. Michael Ananiaboy is a financial consultant.